the bridge is on, so now it's time to do what I need to do to get strings on. I have to make the saddle and the nut down here and fit the tuners. I use bone for the nuts and saddles on my guitars, so this is just a bunch of saddle blanks and nut blanks over here on this side. So I'll pick out a couple and just start getting them to the right dimensions to use on the instrument. I have the saddle blank fitting just how I want it. It's, it's snug in the slot but not so tight that I have to lift it out with pliers or anything. But there's no back and front back to front movement so that's right where I want it to be it's it's still a little long so I'm gonna just saw that off to the right length and then uh, trim the height it's way too tall right now so I'll get to that in a minute I want the saddle to have the same 20 foot radius as the fretboard so that's what this block is for. It has a, a 20 foot radius machined into it. So now I've got the saddle roughly to that shape, but I'll finish it off by, by sanding it on this block. And then I'll know that the saddle radius matches the fretboard radius. I sanded the nut blank much the same way that I did the saddle. So it fits nicely in the slot without wiggling, um, but it's way too tall. I really want the nut to be just barely taller than the frets. So I found a long time ago that this ruler makes a, a great marking device. So if I put the ruler right in front of the nut and follow the contour of the fretboard because it's a curved fretboard the mark with the pen because the pen has some width to it too that mark that I get on the nut is right about where I want the bottom of the nut slots to be so I'm going to now grind off most of this excess material leave oh, I don't know, maybe a millimeter above the line. And once I get the guitar set up and the strings adjusted to exactly where I want them, then I will remove any excess material. Now I'll do the preliminary notching of the nut for the slots for the six strings. So the base side is typically 5 30 seconds of an inch from the edge of the nut. So I'll mark that. And then the treble string is usually a little further in than that. Um, just over 6 30 seconds of an inch actually. And now, that shows me where the, the sixth and the first string will be. The other strings on a classical are equally divided in that space. So I measure the space. It comes out to 45 millimeters, so that's easy math. Tells me that each string will be 9 millimeters centered nine millimeters apart from its neighbors. Now I'm just using a square to help guide me as I cut the slots. I want them to go straight back from the front edge of the nut. Now I'll start filing the slots. Being careful not to go down past this pencil line or pen line that I had marked a couple minutes ago. A 
I'm starting with a very narrow file because it's easier to follow the pencil lines. But each of these slots is going to have to be made wider because the classical guitar strings are thicker than, than these slots that are 22 thousandths of an inch. Okay, so now I can make these wider. And then the, the G string and the E string, the bass E, both have to be wider still just because they're that's how they come in the sets generally. Okay, so there are the slots just roughed in close enough that I can put the strings on the guitar and then make individual adjustments till I get the height just right. Then I will take the strings off the guitar, remove the nut, and grind down the extra material and polish it up nice and shiny. Now I'll put the tuners on. These are Rubner tuners, which I really like a lot. They're made in Germany. Um, the models I always get come with this ball bearing roller. So even if the roller hole in the peg head isn't perfectly smooth, the, uh, the tuner pivots on this bearing race and it's just smooth as glass no matter what condition these holes are in. Not that they're usually that bad, but uh, I really like these tuners a lot. So typically what I find when I go to put the tuners in is they don't fit as well as they did before the lacquer went on. That's because there's a little bit of lacquer overspray in the holes. So I need to get that out of the holes and the way to do that is just a little dowel rod with a piece of sandpaper stuck to it. Go around and around and remove the lacquer from each hole. Okay. So then there are four screw holes. I'll drill a, a tiny hole and put the screws in. That side will be done. Okay, the tuners are on, so now it's time to put the strings on. This is a 12-hole bridge on this instrument, and uh, it offers a couple of significant advantages over a 6-hole bridge. Uh, primarily, the, the main advantage is because you don't have to tie off the strings on top of the sound hole, the string actually breaks at a much sharper angle to the saddle. And that in turn means a better sound projection um, because there's more downward pressure on the bridge. And the other advantage to this is the strings are more securely locked in place so they're less likely to pull out and uh, whip around and, and ding the soundboard behind the, gr the bridge. So just this little loop is all it takes. I always alternate between the first and the sixth string. So the way these 12 hole bridges work is you pass the string through the proper hole for going off to the nut 
then bring the end around and pass it through the other hole. And then tuck that end of the string through the loop. I, I still worry about strings pulling out of place, so I always tie a little knot in the end so that if the string slips at all, it won't go past that knot. The, the knot catches in the loop on the tie block. Okay, it's not to pitch, and the strings are definitely too high, but strings are going to stretch like crazy for a couple hours, so I'm not going to try to tune this to pitch. And uh, what I typically do is just let the guitar sit at this point for a day or two, so that if there's any kind of you know settling of the top or the neck, which is highly unlikely. Um, that can all take place before I do the final adjustment of the action. So that's what I'll do is just let this sit and move on to a different project. <laughs>